Arizona. My name is Andrea and I'm here with Ju Ping Hodge, owner and tea master here at Seven Cups Tea House. Welcome to our video podcast and today we're going to tackle a tea that is unfamiliar to most American tea drinkers but it's very popular in Asia and becoming increasingly popular in Europe. This tea is called poor tea. So let's learn about poor. Ju Ping, could you tell us a little bit about this tea? Poor tea, just the individual type of tea, or the green tea, or the black tea. Mm -hmm. It has over thousands of years old history. It is mostly processed from the southeastern in China, Yunnan province. The Yunnan province in yeah. southeastern China. Okay. That's, right. uh, that's a border uh, from uh, India, Laos, Vietnam, okay. that area. Okay. And poor tea made from the sun dried green tea. Usually they have two types. We one we call the green poor tea, one we call the black poor tea. So what's the difference between green poor and black poor? Green poor tea made from the sun dried uh, green tea leaves. Then they will take a long time to do the natural natural the fermentation. Oh so over time it's gonna ferment. What become, become the black? black. Oh. Uh, what take years? Years? Oh, yes, okay. ten years or even more. Even more. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, f uh, since uh, 1973, mm -hmm. uh, the tea master find a uh, way to in a short time to do the fermentation. Okay. That's why in the marketing now we can see a lot of uh, black purity. Okay. Before that, all the black purity should uh, change. Cha uh, change from the green poor cake to the black poor cake by years. Mm. Uh, but recently we have some uh, black cake just uh, made by the tea master. They will take about uh, two months to do the fermentation. Now could, can you, f is it easy to find aged poor that's, poor that's been aged for years? And it's hard now because the poor tea is very popular in Asia. So all the people like, uh, uh, except they like to drink it, they also like to uh, collect it. Mm -hmm. So lots of people, um, they will do their best to collect the oldest, the real poor tea. Okay, great. Now, I've always wondered, how, why do we call it poor tea? The poor tea in the old day, the, all the producers will bring their tea to one marketing, to sell and uh, trading. The, uh, there, the, the land, that town, the land, the poor, oh, on okay. the southeast uh, in Yunnan province. So actually, poor tea is just named after named the city? From, yes. Or town, uh, small town. Small town. Small town in, uh, in Yunnan uh, province. Yes. yes. Okay, so you, t you said that poor tea is compressed, and I see some different shapes. Can you explain a little bit about the traditional uh, ways that poor was um, compressed? You see this cake around the shape, Usually is a uh, weight about uh, 375 grams. This is the oldest uh, traditional way to make uh, the poor tea. They will steam the sun dried green mm -hmm. and tea, then compressed into a cake. Mm -hmm. Then they will use some paper to wrap it, or in the old days, some tea even don't have a paper to wrap it individual, but uh, they must be pike. Uh, in se se use seven piece to wrap by the bamboo mm -hmm. uh, shoots some some uh, by the bamboo, uh, so that's also that's why they call the qi zi bing. Mm -hmm. Qi means seven piece. Mm -hmm. They will pack the seven piece mm -hmm. together, wrapped by bamboo. It's easy to carry uh, and store, cause uh, the tea. After they trading in the poor uh, that town, then they will use a horse carrying to the India, Tibet, uh, the East different Asia, areas. different area. So they did uh, compress very tight. You also can see some other shape. This is kind of new, just about a hundred years of history. We call the tota mm -hmm. shape like uh, some ball, huh? some size small, some size big. And I know more recently that they've even made individual small ones for service as well. It's convenient it's for convenient. use because mm -hmm. uh, every small uh, poor tota usually we pack in four grams. Mm. Uh, if uh, you drink from those uh, uh, cake, you before you just uh, broke it, uh, 
you use some hard uh, uh, stuff like a knife or even hammer, but uh, you got to wrap it, use a towel, uh, then you broken it. Uh, then you will be very easy to just open. Uh, break of by hand. Mm -hmm. Every time you just put uh, uh, about four grams. So four grams, maybe like a quarter size. Size, yes. So when you're brewing pour tea from a brick or a cake or a tocha, go ahead and um, a quarter size. But what about this other? I see this is loose tea over here. Yeah, you can say loose tea. This uh, uh, way to drink just uh, recently. It's mm -hmm. new. It's convenient for uh, people to use. And how much how much tea would you use for loose pour tea? About a tablespoon. A if tablespoon. Uh, the tea leaves are very big, mm -hmm. about a, a two tablespoon. Uh, this uh, it's break, mm -hmm. uh, break more um, more popular and familiar with uh, Tibet and the Mongolia. The Tibet they Mongolia. drink the break the tea uh, every meal. Mm -hmm. uh, they drink the tea from uh, this break. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, let's go ahead and brew pour tea. Which, what pour tea are we going to brew today? Today I would like to show you uh, how to use a gaiwan to make uh, some green pour tea. Then use a yishin pot to make uh, some black uh, pour tea. If you don't have those cup in your house, you can just uh, use a porcelain pot or even glass cup to make it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very easy. Tradition is use those. And we also f find out if you use the yishin pot, the taste better, mm. uh, make more flavor out. Okay. So as Zhu Ping is preparing, getting the about quarter size green pour, one of the important things about drinking pour tea is that the first um, pot that you make, you want to rinse the tea leaves because, as Zhu Ping was saying, um, much of the pour was is stored and uh, traveled, so you want to rinse the tea leaves off before you drink it. It also takes a lot of the caffeine, so if you're sensitive to caffeine, rinsing the first pot is a great strategy. Great. So after you open the wrapper, you will say, looks like a cake. Mm -hmm. uh, they compressed, very tight. When we open the pour cake, uh, we like to use some opener. Mm -hmm. We call the pour tea style opener. Kind of looks like a, an a envelope opener, really. <laughs> yeah, same. Because uh, uh, we want to uh, do our best to avoid, won't, uh, don't damage uh, the tea leaves. Mm. So we will be very gentle, put uh, the opener inside, very gentle, little by little, then very slow to open the, the dry tea leaves because every tea leaves pressed by layer by layer. Mm -hmm. So you can find, you can feel that they will get out by the la every different layers. So you, you just open the like this much. You say mm -hmm. quarter size. Quarter size. Quarter yeah. size. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, always tempted to put more. You, poor tea, you don't need, uh, do, you don't too, need that too much. Because the <laughs> uh, poor tea came from the Yunnan province. Uh -huh. It uh, must be came from the one special, the we named the big uh, leaves tea tree. Uh -huh. It's not a bush. It's, oh, it's so not a bush. It's okay. Uh, tea plants, some we named the bush, some we call the tea tree. Mm -hmm. Tea bush, the uh, character milder. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The tea tree grew on the Yunnan, their character for the taste, it's a strong, mm. rich. Uh, they That's grow as a reinforce, mm. very rich. So, so remember, just a quarter size. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, you also, poor tea, you, uh, you will uh, find out, you can use the same tea leaves, you infuse many times. I've you infused can sometimes poor tea, like 10 pots. Some, yeah, even more than even that. More than if that. Uh, you like a uh, lightly taste, mm -hmm. you just uh, quickly infuse about uh, one minute. Okay. So, uh. Great. And a lot of times people ask us about storing tea. With all our other teas, like oolong or green tea, we store it in a, a aluminum foil, um, foil bag, and you want to have a seal type because those teas you're going to want to drink between one and two, sometimes three years. But with poor tea, you want to have it um, stored so that it can still uh, continue the fermentation process, so that you want to have 
it exposed to the air. So I recommend that when you store it, find a place that's not going to mingle with other strong scents because the poor tea will absorb that and just place it that it's so that's open to the air, right? Yes, exactly. It must be open with the air. We said poor tea has a life. It always has a life until you brew it. So poor tea always change. Mm. By the fermentation, they will grow lots of microbes. Mm. That's why it can help to cleanse our body. So is the, the, the microbes in the tea from the fermentation process, is that why it's recommended for digestion? Yes, oh, and uh, help the uh, cleanse, clean the blood. Mm. And so you see Jiping is rinsing the first pot, rinsing the tea leaves. And so as you said, there's green pour and there's black pour. So what are some of the the characteristics of a green pour cake that the that you would notice? Later you will say the green pour tea, the tea color looks uh, brown. Uh, uh, the pour, uh, black pour tea, the tea color looks uh, dark, mm. red. Mm. Somebody will think, oh, black pour tea must be very strong taste. Mm. In fact, it's upset. Mm. The green pour tea's taste always strong, rich. Uh, complex aftertaste, the flavor can stay on your mouth for a long time. Very long green taste. The black pour tea compared to the green pour tea, much more mild. Never go bitter. Uh, lightly sweet after you drink it. Okay, let's try. So we're going to brew the second pot. We drink from the second pot. If you're looking to buy poor tea at sevencups.com, you can visit us or come to our tea house because we do carry all um, loose pour in addition to the cakes and the tochas. My personal favorite is black poor tea, so I'm very excited. Please join us next week as we continue our video podcast on poor tea part two. We welcome your questions and comments, so please visit us at 7cups.com and we will answer any questions you have about tea and tea culture.